Okay, so uh, we're back at the generator and uh, since we now know that it uh, starts and seems to perform uh, reasonably uh, I can move ahead with the rest of my plan and you see if anyone's been around long enough you know I used to drive this van quite a lot now the unsung hero of that uh, process is this van this is my uh, ugly green garden shed is my spare parts uh, Nissan Vanette, which is actually in a pretty damn good condition uh, given that it cost 300 euros. Uh, so my original plan for the diesel was to just uh, uh, let it sit on this smart little foundation I made and uh, build a little shed around it. Well, a shed is going to cost me a lot more uh, than 300 euros. So, uh, my plan is to just have my neighbour come with this uh, a large uh, doser sort of thing and take that, put it in there. Uh, because uh, this van, it loads about a ton. I've stripped out a lot of the interior, uh, removed unnecessary components. So you can see it's uh, uh, very bare in here. There's not much going on. We only have one seat, no internal anything basically. Uh, and uh, the generator actually fits perfectly well uh, in the back here. Uh, it's about, the generator is about 1.9 meters long. We have over two meters of uh, length available. It's uh, significantly uh, narrower than the van and even with uh, the ridiculous exhaust we have mounted right now, uh, it's about 1.3 meters tall and we have exactly 1.3 meters uh, of opening here from the floor to these. Uh, so if I remove the exhaust lifting this thing in uh, should be uh, no challenge at all for a skilled uh, operator on the uh, cherry picker thing. So that's coming up but before we do that I want to go through it a bit more uh, since we have it outside and everything is uh, easy to access. Uh, and I just opened up the box on top of the generator because I wanted to see what's in there and this will need some oversight. So we have all the face wirings for neutral and the ground coming in here and this is, there's been some liquid ingress at some point. It looks very very old but we have quite a lot of rust of these and nuts and bolts so I probably want to take those off. Uh, clean them up just to make sure everything checks out. Uh, we also definitely do not have any kind of uh, smart regulation stuff uh, in here, so I'm guessing uh, that uh, the entire thing just uh, is completely uh, uh, electromechanically uh, regulated, uh, just relying on being large and heavy with a ton of copper in it to uh, keep the output voltage stable. Uh, I also want to take a look inside this panel because there's a very intentional air gap here. Someone has uh, gone out of their way to make sure this thing does not close all the way. And I want to know why that is. I'm guessing we have some slippering brushy sort of things in these two. Uh, so I want to take this up, off, uh, have a look. I uh, also want to take this end piece off. I'm guessing we're just going to have access to grease. Uh, the bearing there. I'm guessing this entire large rear section is going to be like a bearing assembly which seems to have been messed with at some point. Uh, so yeah there's, there's uh, some stuff to go through. I also want to uh, figure out how these meters are wired up uh, because we have one dead meter. Uh, was it this one which doesn't do anything and I'm guessing that's for coolant temp uh, going to this thing which is just dangling in the air there. I want to see if, if, if I can get that working. That would be nice. Uh, if not then oh well we still have what I believe to be the oil temp gauge but yeah I want to uh, check all that out. Uh, we also do have this giant plug. If anyone has one of these plugs at hand get in touch. Uh, otherwise I'm gonna have to figure out some other way to actually hook this up to uh, the uh, future automatics that are going to be built for this thing. I actually have like a, the entire control system or most of it which came with this generator I have in parts uh, including like a fairly nice but ancient 
uh, like uh, motor control panel from the mid 80s which has like oil pressure monitoring speed monitoring all kinds of like nice housekeeping features built in just controlling stuff through relays so I'm, I'm hoping to be able to uh, just uh, reapply that uh, to uh, the system and have a nice uh, uh, like push button start uh, which, which uh, can automatically shut down the engine if there's a uh, oil pressure loss or overheating or something like that so there, there's a lot of stuff to do but I want to get like the major sort of uh, uh, first aid done while it's easy to access because the van is fairly large but it, it is going to be sort of narrow to access uh, at least the generator side we actually have uh, sliding doors on both sides which is going to be excellent for access because the motor is going to be toward the front of the van uh, so we're basically going to be able to open up the doors and have like easy access to probably most of the engine. I think it's going to cut off like somewhere around there. So that's going to be really easy to access, but this stuff is going to be a bit more difficult. Thankfully, there's a lot less stuff going on there. But yeah, let's open up the back here and see what we're dealing with. Well, 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 we are certainly finding some secrets. So that's uh, obviously an electronic uh, voltage regulator and uh, the thing that was jamming the hatch open was this thing which was just sitting there. It's not connected to anything and I have no idea what it does. Uh, so I'm guessing that was actually just a mistake. Maybe it was hard to access. You can see the indent of a connector there. We do have some kind of schematic for it. I'm not sure what's what, but we ha also have actually adjustment stuff. Voltage ex oh, ex excitation trip. Maybe it has some overload protection. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Over 550 kilowatts. Okay, so this can do. This regulator is certainly sized for the operation. Uh, I don't think we're going to have to touch anything, but I think I'm going to like a zip tie this somewhere and actually close it up properly. I feel like this was not left open on purpose. This thing has no electrolytics that I can see, but it has a bunch of tantalums, so yeesh. Hopefully this thing is going to be fine forever. Uh, over here we have, I'm not sure what, just the end of the axle and some kind of coil thing. The, the entire rear end of the axle uh, of the uh, generator seems to be uh, like uh, associated with uh, uh, the excitation stuff. I'm not really sure what I'm looking at. Uh, we also have a very painted over uh, grease nozzle, which seems to go to a bearing bushing sort of deal in there. So this is probably gonna need some fresh grease uh, sadly I don't have any specs for this on manuals or anything so I have no idea uh, what kind of grease this actually wants but hopefully some just normal uh, EP2 is gonna be fine and uh, in here it sadly looks fairly crusty you can tell that this thing has been basically out to sea its whole, whole life because there's a lot of uh, corrosion here and there I kind of don't want to mess with any of this because it's currently working and it's uh, going to be living a fairly leisurely life. So hopefully this is all just going to uh, survive, but I don't like the look of all of this stuff. There's just a lot of rusty corroded connections all over. I bet we can see some of the uh, fatter wiring, the stator and the rotor. Oh god, that that certainly looks crusty. That certainly look, looks crusty. The entire inside is fairly rusted out actually. It's the uh, oh wow, well, I, I must have to do something about that actually because that. That connection there seems to have actually disintegrated. Like that seems to be 
the connective has actually fallen apart and it's almost touching the case and there's a bunch of rust there. So I guess I'm gonna have to actually get the anti-regulator plate off to take a look at that. That's a shame, I don't wanna do that. But yeah, that probably has to happen. So good thing we checked it over. I don't like any of that. See, that's the sort of thing that's I'm, I'm afraid it could cause like massive arcing and cause a very dangerous situation if uh, not taken care of. Uh, probably gonna have to take these grills off as well just to get a bit of a better look at everything. Otherwise, I'm, aside from being a bit crusty, it's pretty clean. Like it's not horribly gunked up, it's just uh, it's been exposed to sea air for a very long time and it's been sitting outside for a while. <laughs> Mostly good news, but yeah, that connector means that this guy has to come off. But at least we have a fancy electronic regulator. Yeah, so there's voltage reg off and these are the questionable wires. So yeah, this that's an issue. Like that's been, that's been so close to the case. Like you can see how there's been a voltage differential there and it's actually been rusting out the metal because there's a bunch more rust right there. Whew, yeah, that's, that's not good. So I'm gonna have to very carefully clean that out and uh, put something on it to insulate it a bit better. Oof, good thing we caught that. I I'm, would not look forward to what uh, that would do when it actually fails. Because that's not, that's not a happy wiring loom. Yeah, definitely not, so let's uh, see what we can do. Yeah, there's a plug. had to put some alcohol on it to actually get it out, but this, this is not a happy connector. And the receptacle is, uh, like you, you can see it's been running fairly warm. That's, that's not good, but at least we can access it. It's, there's some slack in the wiring, so I'm just gonna clean that up and reinstall it. Maybe take a look at its uh, neighbor as well, because all of this seems to have been fairly affected by whatever's uh, uh, been uh, happening due to the corrosion. Ooh, 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 look at that, I got to rubbing it and you can see those little gold uh, brass looking parts. Those are arcing marks. This has been arcing in operation. Ooh, ooh, no wonder it looks so bad. Man, am I glad we caught that. That's, uh, that's a hazard in, in the making for sure. Let's finish cleaning this up and making sure that uh, this does not happen again. Man, am I glad I took this hatch off. Okay, starting to look like something. Thankfully the connector and the connection seem to be in reasonable order. I can't really access to clean the inside of that, but I've drunk everything in al alcohol and uh, done the in out in out routine cleaning it up as we go along so i think it's going to be fine so let's just uh, get this plugged back in and uh, then we're going to take a look at the other one as well because it's been right there i suspect this one's going to be real dirty as well and there we go everything cleaned up plugged back in and i put some fat shrink wrapper on that so it has uh, something to actually hold the connectors on uh, and uh, sort of buffet it if it starts rubbing again. Uh, there's no real way to fix that wire in place uh, so it doesn't rub, but uh, like given the amount of hours and the small amount of damage, the issue was caused by the connector just sliding off. I don't think it's gonna be an issue. This thing doesn't vibrate the whole time. Everything else looks fine. The other wires haven't been chafing. So I'm just gonna sort of clean up the rust and put it back on. I don't think we need to be doing anything more there. Good. All right, and I think we're pretty much done for uh, today. The sun is setting. So I've uh, cleaned everything up, put it uh, back together, gave the whole thing a bit of a uh, 
a sock with a vacuum and a blue and brushed some of the most uh, egregious loose paint flakes and rust off so it looks a bit cleaner. Uh, I don't really care about the paint job since it's going to be very nicely encased in a place where it's not going to be exposed to the elements. Uh, so I'm not going to repaint it or anything. It's it's not going to be degrading. Uh, but I don't want all the like loose paint flakes to just sort of shuff off uh, at uh, on the floor uh, when it's in the van. It's better just have them uh, out of the way before we lift it in. And it looks quite a bit fresher, although. It's, it still <laughs> has a bit of corrosion and rust all over. Uh, I've cleaned up the levers. I had this guy off, uh, vacuumed out the bottom of a generator casing. There was quite a bit of just loose crap lying around there. Uh, cleaned up the uh, air, uh, she, air grills on both sides. So, yeah. I haven't done anything to the uh, wiring in there. I'm leaving that for another day. I need to get a box off so I can properly access everything. Wiped off some of the worst oil leaks or other oil spills. It's not, it doesn't seem to be leaking anything, but there was a bunch of oil and fuel spills there from many uh, filter changes. Hmm. So yeah, it's coming along nicely. Just giving it a bit of a brush down has really made it look quite a bit fresher. It's uh, probably a bit more obvious in person, but it's uh, it uh, lost a lot of the old uh, stuffy machinery vibe. Now, other than the diesel itself, I also uh, got my hands on the entire automation box, uh, which was responsible for running no less than three of these diesels uh, in a really fancy grid-tied, uh, super advanced, proper uh, automatic system. Now, I'm obviously not going to do that, but I have uh, stripped the entire giant cabinet of every useful part uh, it contained. Uh, and uh, aside from this uh, box of goodies with some questionable hour meters, I think this is for the other diesel. I have no idea if these were running uh, when they were decommissioned. Uh, I have two of these uh, panels, and these are fancy. These are automatic uh, switchover uh, controllers. These uh, essentially take care of uh, just running uh, a completely automatic backup diesel. Uh, and it's got uh, basically everything you'd want. You've got uh, uh, just uh, under voltage protection, over current protection. Uh, it's got uh, oil pressure protection, uh, automatic starting, emergency stop functionality. It's got everything you want. Now this one is supposedly broken, it uh, was, they tried to fix it, didn't work. However, we have another one. Uh, now, these are very specific, but thanks to some higher power, someone wrote a dissertation on these and translated the only manual I've been able to find to Swedish. This is someone's dissertation from 2010. Thank you, whoever did this. Uh, that has told, told me how to wire this thing up. And this one, I think this was in use. If we do that, we get some LEDs. And uh, it seems to actually be trying to do some stuff. So this is the one of the two relay breakout boards. This is the main one with like the starter relay and shut off relay. Uh, and if we, for instance, press test, it'll start clicking relays and it's actually trying to start the engine now. So it has, I think it's trying to crank now, there it stopped cranking, I think. And it's just clicking relays and doing stuff. It's obviously not gonna manage to do anything. And I think it just sort of hangs in this mode because it's getting no feedback that the engine's actually started. I'm not entirely sure why, why it's mad about that. But the brains of the operation seem to be working, uh, which is super nice because I really want to use this. It's just such a nice panel. And if we go on emergency stop, it will actually uh, keep stopping the engine as long as we're holding that down. 
So this is a really good basis for uh, just uh, getting a decent starter procedure in place. I think this will also handle like uh, contact switching so that it'll uh, just be able to turn on the contactor once the engine has started and uh, gotten up to speed. Uh, I have, I'm not sure where they went, they're somewhere in here. Something like uh, voltage and uh, frequency uh, monitoring relays. These are ancient and probably could do with some oversight. But uh, I think we should be able to get a decent like startup shutdown and uh, over load protection system built out of this just giant pile of parts including some lovely large expensive knife fuses these are too big but i think there are some 35 amp ones as well but yeah what a box of goodies <laughs>